Well, good morning. And uh, I don't know if you can hear me or not this morning. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm perfectly safe, but these waves do get a little bit aggressive every now and again. And today, I did actually put my wellies on, but I, I left my waterproof trousers at home. And I really <laughs> wish I would have brought them today because I'm a little bit damp now. But at the moment, I'm at West Runton. And obviously, I'm trying to get some images of these breaking waves. And I'm going to be playing around today with some shutter settings. At the moment, I'm on 0.6 of a second, just to kind of, kind of smooth out these waves a little bit, uh, but still trying to keep some of the, the definition. Whoa, that was a big one. And then I'm going to be increasing the shutter speed. Now I have been here early this morning. Oh, that was a really big one. Right, let me go back. Let's have a chat over there. Oh, I'm drenched. Well, I think it's time now just to stop, gather my thoughts, because the sea is getting incredibly aggressive and I'm still probably half an hour possibly away from high tide. Plus, there's a full moon. So this is a, an extremely high tide at the moment. Now, I can't photograph where I was earlier because I, the, the tide is just, I'm just getting absolutely drenched. But I can't do a shorter exposure than I was doing because there's just no light at the moment. So for me to, to really say raise my ISO, uh, my shutter speed to say one over a thousand to really try and freeze frame these crashing waves, the ISO it's just going to be so high and so grainy. So, yeah, I think at the moment I'm just a little bit limited as to what I can do. So, I'm just going to have some coffee, think about it, but more importantly, just enjoy these stunning waves. What a great morning. Right, well, where I am at the moment is a good compromise for getting fairly close to the tide breaking, but with it not coming up and over the top of my wellies like it was over there. Now, I'm also fairly limited to shutter speeds here because, as I say, there is no light, so I really can't freeze frame these waves. So. I, I am going to go for a long-ish exposure. Not super long, but this one is about a quarter of a second. Just enough to kind of take out the hardness uh, of the breaking waves and just make it that little bit softer. But what I do like about this is the, is the sky. Um, the sky is quite interesting and there is a, a little bit of light shining through here. I'm not convinced I like the sea defence in this, but the way that the, the sea is coming up and then starting to wash back over the concrete sea defence, it does look interesting. So, I'll take this, I'll show you guys the image, and then we'll move on. Well, I've just moved up a little bit further because that tide was coming up quite high and I was actually worried that I might get a rogue wave and it actually got up above the sea defence and actually on top of my camera bag so I thought I'm going to play safe I'm going to come to even higher ground 
and I'm looking obviously down the, the opposite direction from where I was before. So this is almost west facing where I'm looking now, actually heading towards Sheringham. So the sky in this direction is looking a lot darker than if I was to spin the camera around and point almost east. It's not quite west and east, but good enough for this description. And I've played around with portrait versus landscape, and I'm still not kind of quite convinced yet on, on which orientation that I like. But when I was in landscape, I did prefer the horizon, certainly on the back of the camera, the horizon to be center of the frame rather than on the top third or the, or the bottom third. And then you've got this old wooden sea defense just coming in from the, the right hand side. And then I went portrait. Um, but when I'm looking at portrait at the moment, my gut reaction is I do like it, but if I think I'm gonna stick with portrait, I might even convert that into a, a square crop so difficult to judge on the back of the camera in the field but what I could spot in the distance was an old piece of um, sea defence that had washed up and it was just bugging me so I thought well I'll just quickly go down there and I would get that out of the way rather than trying to use content aware so for landscape and portrait all the settings have been the same a focus to infinity, it's a quarter of a second, ISO 50, polarizer and 0.6 soft grad. Well, I don't think the light is going to improve for me anytime soon. So I've now made the decision that I'm going to swing the camera around back towards the east and I'm going to start shooting the surf. Now, ideally, I would like the, the light to be a lot brighter than this because I want to shoot at one over one thousand of a, of a second for the shutter speed and I also want to shoot at around about f9 and there is a reason for that but that means at the moment to get a, a fairly well balanced image I have to raise my ISO up to 2000 so I will need to possibly do a little bit of work with this in post and to take away some of the noise I may actually lose that really crisp shot that I'm after but the reason I'm shooting on, say, F9 as opposed to F4 is because I have, I've only got a 70 to 200 lens. And sometimes the, the real interesting waves are a lot further out than, obviously, than I can actually reach. And what happens is sometimes the autofocus will lock on to one particular wave because everything's happening so fast, we'll lock onto one particular wave and the wave that I really liked in that particular photo is slightly out of focus. So if I was going for F4, it, it perhaps just wouldn't work for me. So by going for F9, I've got a better chance to capture different waves in focus and then crop the image when I get back to post. That's what I found over the last kind of few weeks of practicing anyway. Well, what I'm trying to do now is get an image of the surfers. So, but I also want chrome appear in the background. Now, I don't know if I'm going to achieve that, and that's why I'm actually on the tripod rather than following them around handheld, because I do want that peer in the background. I think it's just going to add something to the image. Anyway, I'm going to carry on photographing these but whatever happens, if I change anything, I'll put all my settings up every time I show you an image. Well, 
Right, okay. That's me done. I did manage to get a few shots when I was on the tripod with chroma pier in the background. So I thought what I do now, I go handheld, go in at about 200 mil, and I'll try and capture a few images of these guys riding the waves. And uh, as I said earlier, fair play to them. That cannot be easy. But anyway, I'm all done now at the beach. And the reason that I actually chose West Runton today is also because it's quite close to Norwich. And in Norwich, there is Wex Photography. So what I'm going to do now, I'm leaving here. I'm going there because a few days ago, I actually sold my last telescope, a Takahashi 85. And me and the new owner both got a very good deal. I sold it for more than I paid for it, and he bought it for less than you can buy it in a shop. So with the money that I've got from the telescope, I'm off to Wex to treat myself to a new Sony lens. I won't say what it is at the moment, because I've not made my mind up 100%, I'm 99% sure on what I'm going to get and hopefully that will help me with this kind of photography in the future. But until my next video, I'm going to say thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you guys very soon. See ya.